Boa noite! Hello, hello, hello! Welcome, welcome, boys, girls, and everyone in between to the auditorium at São Paulo Expo. I'm Brenda Olivieri, and we're here almost at the end of the last evening of the greatest independent gaming event in Latin America, Big Festival 2022. Our next panel is part of the Big Dead lineup, uh, and it's also part of the Big Preview lineup. This will be... Uh, a s uh, special event, a special feature, uh, Big Dev. So the largest uh, independent gaming event could bring over to you. So I'm talking about Takeshi Tokita, who's currently producer uh, over 30 years in uh, his career, games such as Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and Live Alive. Now, in July, his first work as a director, Live Alive, will be launched in a new version in high def uh, 2D. Uh, so, the demo is already available, uh, but he will tell you himself about his career with, uh, with JRPGs. Um, these other titles of which he participated while he talks about the story and uh, the evolution of JRPGs. So are you ready for this class? Important bit of um, housekeeping. We'll have a presentation in Japanese, but please do not worry, as we will have simultaneous translation into English and Portuguese. Everybody has their headsets on? So, on YouTube, you double-check in the description of the video, there's the link with the page for translation. In the auditorium, we have headsets. Welcome to Takashi Tokita! You can go! Oi! Hi, good evening, everyone. Square Enix no Tokita Takashi desu. So, I see you're all stoked over there, and actually I would have loved to go to Brazil, but due to the pandemic, unfortunately, that was not possible. So I'm here online with you. So, we're moving on. So, I'm going to start talking about when I was born. I was born in 1966. Back then, there were many mangas that uh, came about, especially in the 60s. And uh, when I was younger, I wanted to be a manga uh, artist, a mangaka. And at the time, during, uh, you know, uh, elementary school, high school, I was really interested uh, in animes because there was a boom of animes in Japan. And from there on, I wanted to be a, a voice artist, a uh, very specific profession in uh, Japan, those voice artists for anime. And uh, I started loving uh, games. Uh, specific games uh, from Nintendo that started uh, coming about uh, back then and some electronic games that started being uh, launched at the time. So what happened was that I loved manga first and then I was interested in anime and finally I started having greater and greater interest in games. And uh, during my school years, at the end of my school years, uh, Famicom started being sold. Um, it was, a, it was a game from Nintendo, and at the time in school, I was part of a theater group and a theater company, and Famicom was um, peaking. 
and um, and I really wanted to be an actor and so I started participating in this theater company and uh, it was a very creative type of work at the time I wanted um, to work with um, creative uh, 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 jobs where I could use my creativity. And I found uh, work in, in games, uh, games with pixel art. Uh, and at the time, I was uh, then interested by that type of design. For two years, I worked uh, at Zapco uh, as a part-timer. Uh, so at the time, I started um, studying coding, um, computer programming, and I started learning several uh, different aspects about um, games and computing. At the time, there was no internet. And uh, even so, in Japan, uh, people were creating uh, more and more games. That was the backdrop against which I lived. In 1986, I left uh, Zapco and went over to Square. Today it's called Square Enix. But uh, in the old days, uh, there were two companies, Square and Enix. And it in, was in 2003 that they merged, actually. But in uh, 86 was when I started working a uh, part-timer uh, for Square. And from the moment I started working uh, in that company, I can imagine that you know about this, but I started working uh, on a game called Alien 2. The uh, movie had just been launched in the movie theaters, uh, released, and there was uh, MSX, uh, a console uh, used on computer. And, um, and in 1987, that very same year, uh, the Final Fantasy uh, franchise um, started. And with that first uh, Final Fantasy, I started working on pixel art. And so I was in charge of uh, the design of designing monsters with pixel art. So that was the first project that I truly participated in. In the following year, 1988, I participated of a Hanjuko Hero, which is a strategy game, uh, real time, um, where um, it was not actually sold outside of Japan, uh, released outside of Japan, but it was a very interesting uh, uh, game uh, in Japan. And in 1988, uh, Final Fantasy Legend uh, went over to Game Boy. So I did the uh, pixel art and participated in uh, uh, creating the story of Final Fantasy Legend. Well, moving on, uh, talking about uh, what I did for the Famicom uh, systems. I was hired as a uh, full-time uh, game designer in 1990. And so then I started um, making headway in terms of a few pro projects uh, beyond pixel art. And the first title that I took part in more actively was Final Fantasy IV. I understand you know this title extremely well. I was the lead designer. And um, not just all of the battles, and uh, so, so I, I, I thought about all the stories, where the music was going to kick in. Uh, the uh, features of characters. Um, I, I thought about all of that with uh, with the whole team, of course, but but in, in many aspects, I did it uh, by myself. I felt a lot of pressure because if I didn't uh, uh, move forward, the, the project wouldn't move. <laughs> so from the very uh, beginning, from the get-go, I played the game and I was thinking about how users would feel and so it was a very interesting project uh, to work with. Uh, and this was the first time this, this franchise uh, uh, became more of an RPG kind of thing, you know, the, the, the player can uh, communicate uh, with uh, the uh, character and so it, it was a really interesting experience. Um, it's very positive because I could sell that project outside of Japan, so release it outside of Japan. Very interesting times. This title defined was the was the landmark for my destiny. Uh, so the following year, I just mentioned I talked to Hanjuko Hero. 
and uh, uh, there was the sequel. I was the uh, script director, and so I was the head of all of that, uh, you know, the, the monster that has a, uh, a funny aspect, and so you structure the strategy to move forward in the game. From there on, uh, well, from now on, I want to talk about uh, some projects I worked as a director. In 1994, the first uh, piece that I worked on as a director, Live a Life. Um, this year, on the 22nd of July, we're going to launch a remake. So 30 years later, we have managed to launch the remake. This was the first title I directed. At the time, I'd also like to talk a bit more about why I structured uh, the game uh, as such. There was Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and Chrono Trigger was also beginning to be designed, so I wanted to do something different. And at the time, um, I thought about having a game that, uh, you know, would have different characters and different manga artists participating in the process of creating uh, the characters. And so I created this uh, RPG in a way that you could have the experience of many lives. So that's why it's called Live Alive. I really wanted for that title to be released abroad, not just in Japan. But the results of sales in Japan were not uh, satisfactory. That's why we couldn't sell it abroad. However, many, many people played uh, outside of Japan. And for that reason, after 30 years, it was possible to uh, remake it. So I want to really thank everyone who has always supported this game. So after I wrapped, uh, wrapped up the Live Alive uh, project, I went over to Chrono Trigger. That project uh, was already um, ongoing. There was a different director. It was rolling, and we worked together to um, lead the project. Uh, at the end of the day, there were three directors, and I was one of them. Mr. Akira Toriyama was the very first time I worked uh, with him. Uh, I'm a big fan of his, and uh, uh, it was very important uh, for my career. Uh, it was uh, uh, phenomenal to be able to work with him. And then three years later, in 1998, I, uh, I joined the PlayStation Age. <laughs> First title I worked on was Parasite Eve. During the period that Final Fantasy VII was being developed, I was in L.A. along with a uh, Hollywood uh, team to uh, design that game, uh, Parasite Eve. Uh, at the time, there was no designer who could work in 3D. That's why I went to L.A. to be able to work with a person who knew the a 3D technique, and there was a, a, a period that I went back to Japan, and back then I helped folks who were working on Final Fantasy VII. So then I uh, took both projects, uh, I, I led them together, um, worked on them at the same time, and at, at that time I had the opportunity to work abroad, outside of Japan, to conclude the project. I can imagine many people are big fans of that game because um, always hear people talking about they love Parasite Eve. It was an incredible experience. Uh, it was the first time I went to live outside of Japan. I had to interact and, and, and work with uh, folks from outside of Japan and folks from the movie industry who had a different uh, take on the world. So different aspects, a, a f many first times. <laughs> uh, it was difficult and challenging uh, uh, to me, but... Uh, the experience uh, uh, is what has made me what I am today. So then I went back to Japan in 1999, and then I became the director of Chocobo Racing. Uh, currently, uh, very recently, uh, there's the uh, 
Chocobo Grand Prix. It's a race that it's uh, funny, actually fun uh, for different uh, ages. Uh, it's very different in RPG. But it was a new experience that I really enjoyed uh, being a part of. Uh, in 2000, when the 2000s came around, uh, PlayStation 2 was then released. Okay, so we're back. And uh, I worked also with a different director. It was a very meaningful experience. And now talking about uh, the year of 2003, Square came together with Enix and they merged and became Square Enix. So I worked with uh, some projects in terms uh, as a director and others as a producer. So relaunched uh, another edition of Hanjuku Hero. And unfortunately, we were unable to sell it uh, outside of Japan. But just uh, to tell you what it was like, we had a story where the topic was technology. So it, it was the 2D group against the 3D group. <laughs> so there was this whole background of the technological transition, kind of like a, a, a comical kind of take on it, uh, uh, funny. So it, in 2005, I created Egg Monster Hero for Nintendo DS. And it was right at the time when Nintendo DS was uh, launched. I think it came about in 04, Nintendo DS. So I created Egg Monster Hero, which is part of the Hanjuku Hero project. In Hanjuku Hero, then, uh, we were able to launch uh, the fourth version for PlayStation 2. But unfortunately, we could not sell it outside of Japan again. <laughs> But it's such a funny game and a fun game, and I had a lot of fun in the uh, creative process. So we're moving on to the next uh, slide. It's taking a little longer to load. Here we go. So now talking about Final Fantasy IV, the remake version for Nintendo DS. We had a 3D version uh, for a game that was a 2D original game. So we also had the voices uh, placed. I can imagine lots of people have played that game. Um, it was the first time, actually, the first time I participated as a director of Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy IV. But in that game, it was a, it was a remake, several deep uh, issues. But but it's it's been a long time, you know, looking back. But um, I can imagine many people like it because I have received a lot of feedback about that because it, it brings those uh, uh, characters from the uh, fourth edition. Now, talking about Final Fantasy IV, uh, there was a sequel called The After Years. The, it was developed for mobile phones uh, in Japan. Uh, it was uh, one right one before the smartphone, uh, the type of uh, device that was developed at the time. Every month, we it was a, f a feature phone. So uh, every month, a chapter. So we launched uh, every month, every uh, chapter, and uh, as if it were a story with several, just like a, a show, a TV show that you have the uh, um, that you have the uh, uh, episodes, right? Uh, that was the style, the style that we had, and in Japan, outside of Japan, actually, it was possible to make. Uh, this title available. Uh, it was ported over to WiiWare. Um, so several episodes in Japan, a different experience uh, that folks were used to. And I really wanted to do something similar to Live Alive. You know, something that style where people could interact and have different storylines. That's something I really like. Then I started working as a producer for some Nintendo DS projects. That wasn't sold outside Japan, and it's called Nana Shino Game. It's a horror game. We used both screens of the Nintendo DS so that it was like real world in one of them and fantasy world. 
これなどがある。すごいシステマチックな構造で、えー、ホラーをの世界をこうサバイバルするようなゲームです、ね。はい Survive that horror story. 続編を制作すすすするるるるここここここととととととががでででででききてて、えー、ののゲゲーーーーーームムスタイルスタイルそこでスピンアウト作品 really、うん、DS ドゲームあの、まあ、ゲームはあとゲーム、まあ、ゲームはあとえー、ゲーム自体をテーマにしたので非常にあの思い出深いゲームですね。あのご存知ない方はちょっとインターネットで調べてみてください。Many people may not know this game, but this horror style is very typical of Japan. And I would like to invite you to research about it on the internet. In 2009, I was part of the Final Fantasy The Heroes of Light project as a director too. Mr. Asano was the director of this project, and we worked really close to each other. We worked very closely. There was a DS remake, and that title was developed in other ways as well. The characters are really kawaii, they're really cute. And even though it's a simple game, It's a very sensitive game as well.、はい、nice、ねえー、so let's fast forward to 2010. I was the producer of Final Fantasy Dimensions as well. It is a sequel to the previous Final Fantasy. And we follow that pattern where every month we launched a new episode. So it took a whole year for people to be able to play the whole game. And in this Final Fantasy, we have the world of、uh, light and the world of darkness. So some months you would play in the world of light, and some months you would play in the world of darkness. And these two universes merged at the end. えっと、海外でもスマートフォンで、えー、オールインワンのゲームとして遊べますので、気になった方は、ファイナルファンタジーディメンジョンズ遊んでみてください。ジョブチェンジもできますし、えー、マルチキャラクター、たくさんいるキャラクターをいろんな形で育てられるゲームをやってもらって、いろんな形で育てられるゲームをやってもらって、いろんな形で育てられるゲームをプレイステーションポータブルですね、PSP ですけれども、ファイナルファンタジー4のコンプリート。This is a game for PlayStation Portable。ファイナルファンタジー4、The Complete Collection。オリジナルバージョンのファイナルファンタジー4と、続編であるファイナルファンタジー4、シャフターイヤーズがセットになったコンプリートコレクションですね。This is also a part of the After Years Collection, and we have this collection that has really been developed in the past years. 一緒に遊べるようになってます。For this project, you can have a number of experiences that you have really garnered from the previous Final Fantasy games. And then we fast forward to 2013. A smartphone age has begun. So we have iOS and Android projects. So we redeveloped Final Fantasy IV, the after years, and 3D for smartphones. そして、And、you can also play it abroad now. You can play it outside Japan. In 2015, we had Final Fantasy Dimensions 2. And this is a social game. You can play it while you interact with other people. And there is also that chrono trigger essence, meaning you can time travel. You can go to And come from different ages and join different battles. It can also be played on smartphones. So, in case you don't know this game, please download it and give it a go. We're in 2019 now. We're getting close to 2020. RPG game is now. I created a new RPG game called Oninaki. I was the creative producer. 
で、えー、スクエニックスの子会社で東京 RPG ファクトリーという、えー、スタジオがあるんですが、えー、I am s e t We have a company that's part of the Square Enix group called Tokyo RPG Stadium. ちょっと、えー、とあの日本的な。And alongside this company, we created a very specific Japanese RPG in, the, in that really Japanese fantasy world. It is a project that has more of a dark theme. The subject matter is really death and reincarnation. So you have a, an action RPG that's very typical of Japan and full of Japanese、um, cultural aspects. And it's still available. You can still buy it. So if you're,、uh, interest, if, me, if you're interested, you can still you know, look that up. And now, I think this is what you're looking forward to. This is what you've been looking forward to during my whole presentation. Next week, we're going to launch Live Alive on the 22nd of July. There will be a remake of that game that was launched 30 years ago. There was a game called Octopus Traveler that used to use H. Do. And Live Alive hadn't been launched outside Japan yet, but now it's going to be translated into English. So I really want you to be able to play this game. Let's watch a trailer. Something good and decent. A young prodigy, as strong in body as young in spirit, a worthy successor to my art. Cast flowers to the wind. I'll fight my way to the top, and the world will know my name. That thing's no god of mine, and I'm not melding with these freaks or anyone else. I hope you've enjoyed this trailer. You can also play it on Nintendo. And we have a number of videos already available on the internet, so check them out. I'll talk a little bit. About Live Alive or Live Alive. So, what is Live Alive? There are several chapters and there are seven universes or seven scenarios, several universes from several different ages. So, as you move into or through the ages, a last age will be. Enabled, and then when you get to the end of it, you will be able to play it. The last one will be unlocked, and you'll be able to play it. And I like the idea of having references to many universes from many countries 
So for the United States, I chose the Wild West reference, and in Japan, the ninja universe. So I try to tap into different references from different countries and different ages to structure these uh, characters. And you can really play these um, levels in whatever order you choose. We have prehistory, so this is a time where the word wasn't invented, there was no language. So you, uh, you have communication through signs, so it is a silent game. And the main character has got a very sharp nose. He has got a really good sense of smell. So he develops some tools and weapons to use, and he starts advancing in time. So you have an experience where you're not really using words. This is the highlight, in my opinion, because that is also a challenge. And Megumi Ogata, she is very well known in Japan, and she was the one to produce some of the sounds here to really convey this wordless communication. And the sounds and voices she's put into the game are really powerful, so I hope you like them. The next chapter is Imperial China, the successor. And we have an old Kung Fu master who chooses three disciples to three disciples to uh, learn his abilities. So, who is it that he's going to choose to take his stead to replace him? So that will really depend on uh, how you play the game, really. So this is a very popular story. I hope that you like this remake. And you can also learn a little bit about Kung Fu in doing that. The next one is the Twilight of Edo Japan, the Infiltrator. The main character is a ninja. Nowadays, there are several projects that have ninjas, but here, I am showing how one ninja will break into a castle to be able to carry out his mission. It's one ninja against a hundred um, security guards, so to speak, a hundred guards. You can go through this level without killing anyone, only sneaking your way through, or you can defeat each one of these guards and progress by doing that. And Bakumatsu is the period of Shogunato Tokugawa, the end of the Edo period, you can have a little experience there in the demo version, so if you're interested, check that out. Then we have the Wild West, the Wanderer. You have a wandering uh, gunman who comes to a town and he's going to protect that town from that, uh, that enemy and he's going to cooperate with the city dwellers to defend the town. And it's important that you create a group that can help you out so that you can also put up traps to try and um, defeat the enemy. I really like this period of the Wild West and because this is a period I like so much, and because I'm a big fan of these uh, movies, you know, these Wild West movies, it's one of my favorite chapters, too. And then we have the present day, the strongest, the contemporary age. So the strongest is the subject here, is the theme. It's similar to some fight games we have, but there are several types of fights or battles. So you have different fighters from different types of the world, and the, this fighter will learn the abilities and skills from other fighters to become stronger. I really like this type of, of game. I like this um, type of 
of, はい、そしてバトル、right? these, these fighting games, and I hope you like them too. And then, we have the near future. I created this chapter myself as well. And this chapter is almost a tribute to manga and anime from Japan. I could call this anime fantasy chapter. Those who have played this game really liked it. And we have some characters who have supernatural powers to defeat their enemies. They have supernatural abilities to fight. In this chapter, we wanted The person who sang the theme song from Dragon Ball, Hironobu Kagayama, he sings the opening theme to Dragon Ball. We wanted、uh, him to sing in this chapter. I hope you like it because you, you recognize his voice from the opening song, the theme song from Dragon Ball. And then we have a distant future. This is not a battle, it is a story that will be developed as time goes by. So there is a universe that is limited to a spaceship, and there are very few people there. Then, there will be an issue, a, a bit of a, a feud between the robots and the humans, and this has to be sorted out. I wanted to、um, give this experience of what people would feel like in a spaceship. This subject wasn't really such a popular subject in 1994, but because I really liked it, I wanted to insert this chapter. I hope you like it. そして、えー、中世編ですね、ミドルエイジス。これがですね、And、lastly, middle age. When you get to the end of the seven chapters, you can unlock this stage, this level. So here you have a few characters that need to defeat this monster. And there are several secrets. In this chapter, so I hope you can really find out what these secrets are. You really say, Oh my, I can't believe it! So I hope you really have this experience and then you can play the game so that you really find out what's happening. This is what I had prepped for you today. I have worked in many RPG games throughout my life. It's been 30 years, to be exact, 38 years. And I would never have imagined that after 30 years, I'd be able to relaunch the first game that I directed. It wasn't a big hit at the time, it didn't sell outside Brazil, but it's almost like a miracle. The, the game was reborn from its ashes. So, I'm really happy that you'll be able to play Live Alive. And many people like this game in Japan. And I, I thought about it、um, with these fans. So, the voice actors, the singers, they used to be big fans, or they are fans of this game. So, I'm really happy to have put together this team to produce this game. As I said, I was raised with manga, anime, and games around me. And RPG games. Are really part of the Japanese culture. And manga and anime are also an important part of the Japanese culture. And because of my background, I also went to or got into the gaming world. So the fact that I'm here talking to you and that you're going to be playing a game of mine really gives me the feeling that I'm traveling around the world. And Square Enix always wants to. Give players the best experience possible. And I have also really put my back into giving the best 
experience possible. In these travels I want to, to, to send you on, my adventures in Jap Japanese RPG are going to continue, so I hope that we can continue to walk this path together. We can continue on this journey together. I hope that I can be in Brazil soon and I can join you uh, next year at the big festival in person. I'm very happy to have spoken to you. Unfortunately, there's no uh, way back here. There's no two-way communication, just one-way communication. But I hope you have enjoyed the talk and that you enjoy playing uh, Live Alive, Live Alive. So I hope to see you soon. Thank you.